So now we're going to have a look at, this is uh, one of the suttas that I always do on these retreats, uh, and it's called the Duttiya Agata Pativinya Sutta. And it's the second sutta on getting rid of uh, ill will or defilements. Uh, yeah? So um, this is, uh, now we are still, this is about getting rid of ill will, but still it is a lot to do with using perception. Uh, how to be able to, how to see people in such a way that we do not get upset with them. Yeah, this is a very large part of what this is about. Uh, so very important uh, uh, sutta, because I think if there's anything, one of the most useful things that we can do on the Buddhist path, apart from living morally and doing the right thing, uh, is to change the way we think about other people. This is incredibly useful, uh, and it means you will be surprised. Uh, yeah? One of the really surprising things about this uh, is that things that we take to be a fundamental part of us, like sometimes getting angry, sometimes having ill will, uh, is actually possible to overcome. Uh, it's actually pos and it's not that hard to do it. This is kind of the surprising thing here. Yeah? So uh, every one of you here can overcome all that ill will, pretty much. Uh, yeah? You agree? Yeah, okay. Yes, wow. Okay, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. So we, maybe we should have a test, yeah? We should have a test of all these things, uh, and we should see how much ill will they have. Can you, Niwan, that's your job to, to, uh, to kind of construct a really hard test uh, for people, yeah? You kind of, you, you get some kind of dodgy person off the street who might be one of the members here, clad like some dodgy character, and then kind of come and abuse the members and see what, how they react. Yeah, let's, let's go, something like that. We, we have, we, have to, we have to make it practical, right? So it's kind of a real, a real practical test. So maybe not this year, but maybe next year. Yeah? Yeah. So be, 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 be aware. So, um, yeah, and then we have to have a kind of hidden film camera to film everything, right? So, so, so see what? What? In well meter, that's right. In well meter, exactly. Yeah, that's, 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 a, yeah. that's, a, good, that's a nice, nice way of phrasing it. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so let's have it. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I talk about this sutta every retreat, uh, but I'm going to give you a rough idea of uh, how this works because it is incredible. I think incredibly useful. Uh, so um, let us get started. Yeah, there the venerable Sariputta addressed the mendicants, reverends, mendicants, reverend. They replied, and Sariputta said this. Uh, so another sutta with venerable Sariputta. And uh, in this case, he talks to the monks about very practical matters. Usually, he's a bit more philosophical, but as you can see here, he's also very practical at the same time, which is kind of nice. So, reverence. A mendicant should use these five methods to completely get rid of resentment when it has arisen towards anyone. What five? Yeah, so the first thing you will notice here, yeah, five methods. So depending on the circumstance, you do things slightly differently. The second thing you recognize here, it talks about completely getting rid of resentment. Yeah, so what that means is that it is possible to let go of resentment completely, which is kind of extraordinary. All ill will can be done away with. Isn't that great? I remember when I first became a monk and I, you know, when I go back, you know, you have discussions with my family about uh, Buddhism and in the early days I was very stupid. I wanted to convert my whole family to Buddhism straight away. <laughs> it's not as simple as that, right? It takes a bit of time. You have to kind of be patient with these things. And uh, I remember I would say, say to my father, oh, you, you know, according to Buddhism, you know, you just have to practice, right? And you can completely get rid of ill will, yeah? And he said, I don't believe it. <laughs> And you can see why yeah? these things seem so much part of who we are. It's kind of hard to believe that it's possible to eliminate these things completely. Yeah? But actually you can. And this is kind of one of the beautiful things about the Buddhist path. Yeah? And of course, that makes you into an entirely different person. There is absolutely no ill will. Yeah? You become like a renewed. You become reborn in a kind of metaphorical sense. Yeah? And uh, what, what is that... Um, Born again Christian. This is, this is the born again Buddhist, yeah? The one who eliminates ill will. You're born again there. And this is the real born again there, not the dodgy kind of born again there. So, what are these five kinds? What are these five methods? So, in brief, they are as follows. In the case of a person whose behavior by way of body is impure, but whose behavior by way of speech is pure, you should get rid of resentment for that kind of person. Yeah, so someone has some bad qualities, 
And uh, when they have some bad qualities, uh, then you should uh, get rid of resentment for that person. You shouldn't be angry because of those bad qualities or whatever. So we'll see in a second how this works. But it's a very, a very kind of simple way that this works. In the case of a person who is behaving by way of speech is impure, but who is behaving by way of body is pure, you should get rid of resentment to that person as well. So this person has a different, different set of bad qualities. Yeah? So again, no reason to have ill will towards this person. In the case of a person who is behaving by way of body and speech is impure, but who gets an openness and clarity of the heart from time to time. Yeah, so this is a, one who has a lot of bad qualities, but at least they get an openness and clarity of the heart. Is that good? What does it mean, openness and clarity of the heart? It sounds okay. Yeah, it sounds like it's a good thing, but uh, is it? What does it mean? So what it means is uh, openness is uh, vivarana. And vivarana is the opposite of the nivarana. Nivarana is the five hindrances. This means a lack of five hindrances. So it means that your mind is kind of pure of hindrances. Yeah, so that's kind of good. And clarity is, um, I think, pasada. Pasada means like, um, again, a mind that is clear, that is uh, placid, even um, serene, something like that. Yeah, so it's also a result of not having any hindrances in the mind. Uh, and heart here, I think, is chet, uh, chetasa or something like that, or cheto again, uh, chitta, basically. Uh, yeah, so this is a person who has bad qualities by body and speech, but has good qualities of mind every now and again. Uh, that's what this means. Uh, so we should not have resentment to this kind of person either. Uh, and then there's a person who the behavior by body and speech is impure and who does not get an openness and clarity of the mind from time to time. This is a person with 100% bad qualities, uh, or at least 99%, uh, a lot of bad qualities. Uh. And then there's the case of the person whose behavior by body and speech is pure and who gets an openness and clarity of the heart from time to time. You should get rid of resentment for that kind of person too. Uh. So this is the person who has lots of good qualities. Uh, yeah? And even though they have only good qualities, still we have ill will towards such people. Uh. True, isn't it? Uh, the best people in the world still have ill will towards them. Uh, this is kind of the nature of, uh, uh, not the person, but the nature of uh, us, because uh, defilements lead to stupid, uh, stupidity sometimes. So. so let's see how this is done. Let's go through each one of these five, one by one. Uh, how should you get rid of resentment for a person uh, whose behavior by way of body is impure, but whose behavior by way of speech is pure? Um, suppose a mendicant wearing rag robes sees a rag by the side of the road. They would hold it down with the left foot, spread it out with the right foot, tear out, tear out what is intact and take it away with them. Yeah? Have you seen that happen before? If you, have you seen a mendicant finding a rag on the side of the road? So uh, this is uh, people who wear rag robes. And uh, when you wear a rag robe, you are on the outlook for rags because your robe is ready to fall apart at any time. And uh, it is not very stable. And so you're on the outlook for rags. And then when you see a rag on the side of the road, you are very happy. Yeah, yay, rag. And most people think, yuck, rag. But these monks, they think, yay, rag. And uh, so they, you come to this rag, and then you hold it down with one foot, and you spread it out with the other foot, and you kind of get an overview of the rag. Yeah, this is the rag here, there, and some parts of the rag are nice, some parts of the rag are really bad, they are rotten and dodgy, and so kind of down the middle somewhere is where the good part stops, and so you tear it apart, and what do you do with the rotten stuff? You crunch it up, and you chuck it out because it's garbage, and you take the piece that is intact, that is nice, and you fold it up, yeah, and you carry it with you. Maybe you have a little bag or your bowl or something like that, and you carry it with you into the future. So when you need that rag, it is ready. Or when you need to make a new robe, you have the bits and pieces that you require. But you throw out the rubbish, yeah, and you take the good part with you. That's kind of the idea here. 
And so this is what we do with people. Yeah, so this is what it says next. You don't literally tear them up, but you, uh, you, know, you, uh, you, you do something similar. Yeah. In the same way, at, the time, at that time, you should ignore that person's impure behavior by way of body and focus on their pure behavior by way of speech. Yeah. That is how to get rid of resentment for that person. Yeah. It's a very simple idea. Yeah? People are complicated. People have good qualities, they have bad qualities. Uh, and when the, the good, bad quality is kind of becoming prominent, uh, focus on the good qualities of that person. Uh, and by focusing on the good qualities, you can eliminate uh, that bad quality. You cannot, you don't no longer see it. Uh, yeah, it is no longer important. Uh, it kind of goes by the wayside. Uh, and you still stay and you remind yourself of the good qualities. You build that up as something important in your mind. And as you do so, then uh, things kind of uh, uh, fall into place. Yeah? The ill will disappear, the resentment is gone, because you see the good qualities. And this is your job yeah? here uh, as Buddhist. You should do similar kind of things. See the good qualities in the people around you. And uh, this is not so hard to do, yeah? Uh, very often we see kind of the superficial things. Uh, and when we see the superficial things, we might get upset because uh, superficially people do all kind of bad things. Yeah, they slam the door. Actually, we haven't heard the door today. <laughs> Just occurred to me. But this is the thing. We, for, we, when the door slams, we kind of, yeah, that bad door, yeah? But then when the door doesn't slam, we don't get happy yeah? We should put, imagine if this is kind of how stupid we are, right? We get upset when it happens, but we don't feel happy when it doesn't happen here. This is how biased we are. If we got happy every time something bad did not happen, imagine how much happiness we would have. So, <laughs> yeah. So the suddenly, I am equally stupid. I had to kind of think about it now before, I, before it occurred to me. So that, that's so easy to find happiness in the world, right? If you think like that. So, uh, and it's the same, same thing with people. And one of the kind of remarkable things about being part of a Buddhist community, like being part of the BGF here, it's very simple that everyone who comes here is a good person. Yeah, everyone here comes here wants to do the right thing. Everyone who comes here has good intentions. And that is worthy of an enormous amount of respect. Just having good intentions is worthy of an enormous amount of respect. It means you want to do the right thing in the world. You want to be kind. You want to... And be wise. You want to help others. Yes, you're not perfect. Yes, sometimes you're going to make mistakes. Or whatever, but that's what you really want to. And what a wonderful thing that is. So focus on the good intentions of the people around you. And then when they make a mistake, what does it matter if they make a mistake? When the main building block, when the foundation, yeah, the core of what they are, actually there is no core, but the, the main thing of what they are about is beautiful and is wholesome and solid and, and wonderful. That is surely what matters. And so by thinking like that, and, and this is not like all thinking, like all contemplation, you have to do it again and again and again to make it really strong. Yeah? Actually, there is something in these people that is really nice. And, uh, you know, same thing in the monastery. I, do, I try to do this in the monastery all the time with my fellow monks as well. Huh? You know, when I say these things, I don't just say them. This is kind of how I try to live my life as well, huh? you know. And so you see the beautiful qualities in the people who are there. And then something bad happens. And then straight away, you remind yourself of the good qualities. And the badness just evaporates like dew before the sun. It's gone. And that's how powerful it is. Huh? But to be able to do it, remind yourself, uh, yeah, everyone who is here, uh, good people, uh, people who want to do the right thing, uh, generous people. Uh, I have known many of you for years and years and years because you keep coming back. Uh, I know what you are like. Uh, and, well, I don't know in great detail, but I know a lot, you know, uh, and I know that the good qualities are there. Uh, what a wonderful thing that is. It's worth your celebrating. Uh. And so this is what you do, and you have to by reflecting in this way. And it's not just here at the BGF, but also in society at large. There's lots of good people around. Yeah. Often people who are really kind, and you kind of, when you least expect it, people do something kind towards you, they say a kind thing. And it's kind of, wow, that's really nice when people say something kind. And uh, so uh, people, lots of ordinary people in the world who just have good hearts, but they don't kind of make anything out of themselves. Yeah. The world is full of that. And so this is what you then remember. And as you remember this, uh, 
you start to change your entire attitude to, uh, to humanity. Uh, it's a very simple thing, uh, but it's also very, very powerful. Uh, I'm not going to talk much more about this because I just want to talk about these things in a fair, fairly briefly this time. Often I spend quite a bit of time on this, but uh, I think this time around a bit more short than usual because uh, so many suitors, uh, and that's uh, so we have to kind of, uh, we don't have to move on, but uh, I think that's enough anyway. Let's move on to the next one. How should you get rid of resentment for a person whose behavior by way of speech is impure? but whose behavior by way of body is pure. So this is just the opposite of the previous one, yeah? So sometimes your defilements change. You have defilements in different places. Eh? Suppose there was a lotus pond covered with moss and aquatic plants. And along comes a person struggling in the oppressive heat, weary, thirsty, and parched. They plunge into the lotus pond, sweep apart the moss and aquatic plants, drink from their cupped hands, and be on their way. Yeah, so uh, the lotus pond is like a person, and the person is covered with moss and aquatic plants. It means that you're covered with kind of negative qualities. Yeah, the moss and, and these plants is bad. Then the person comes along uh, uh, struggling in the oppressive heat. The oppressive heat is the ill will. That's oppressive heat. Yeah, and you are weary because ill will tires you out after a while. And you are thirsty because you're looking for some kind of solution. Well, at least this person is. Uh, and parched, that's kind of just added for a good measure, I think. Yeah. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say. <laughs> so this kind of adds to the feeling here. Yeah. So what do you do when that is the case? Well, you plunge into that lotus pond. You sweep away the bad qualities, the moss and the plants. Uh, and you drink from the good qualities that are underneath the water. You drink with your cupped hands. Uh, this is... Uh, Panjali. Panjali is related to the idea of Anjali. The hands are cupped together, and then you are on your way. In the same way, at that, at that time, you should ignore the person's impure behavior by way of speech and focus on their pure behavior by way of body. That's how to get rid of resentment for that person. Yeah, so you drink up their good qualities. It's a beautiful idea. You drink up their good qualities. You fill your mind, your heart, with the good qualities of the other person. Yeah, that is what fills your heart. You don't fill the heart with the negative things. In fact, if your heart is full of the good qualities of the, of the other person, there's no room for the bad qualities because your heart is full. And this is one of those things that you see when you look about the definition of metta, of loving kindness in the suttas. It is like, it is like your heart is full. And because there, it's completely full of these qualities, there is no room for the badness to... to, to um, Enter, in a sense, yeah? It is complete already as it is, uh, and so nothing can really happen to you. Uh. And this is kind of a really nice way of thinking about people. So drink up their good qualities. Uh. Whenever you see the smallest good quality around you, rejoice. Uh. Yeah. Right now, what I see right now, I see all of these people looking at the suttas intently, trying to understand the suttas. That's beautiful already, isn't it? Uh? How can you not become happy when you see that? Uh? It's a wonderful sight. Uh. And so little, the tiniest thing can be a source of happiness, yeah? Tiniest, tiniest little kindness. Uh, you know, I, yeah. I, <laughs> so this is what we, sometimes we need to look for these things. Sometimes we take things for granted. Never take anything for granted. Uh, understand that when people say something nice, say, wow, that's really nice. Uh, you're saying something gently, wow, thank you for being such a gentle person. Uh, Thank you for being my friend at the BGF. Wow, I feel so lucky to have such good friends around me here. What a wonderful thing here. And uh, seeing all of this goodness kind of elevates you. Right? It doesn't allow the negativity to enter into your heart uh, because it is filled of the good qualities. Uh. This is how you overcome ill will. Uh. What a wonderful thing it is to overcome ill will in this world, yeah? because so many people go around fault-finding, doing the wrong kind of thing. Uh. Don't be one of those people. Uh. Stand out from the crowd. Uh. Be kinder than the average, yeah? A lot kinder than the average. Yeah? Or, uh, or maybe not even think of it like that, because the moment you think about other people as average, you're already getting it wrong, yeah? <laughs> so you are just, other people are just conditioned to be what they are. Yeah? And then you have compassion and kindness for them. Yeah? It's beautiful. And these things can be changed so fast if you put your mind to it. Yeah, yeah? this is the great thing about this. Yeah? Let's go on to the next one now. Yeah? 
How should we get rid of resentment for a person whose behavior by way of body and speech is impure? But to get the openness and clarity of the heart from time to time. This is the person who has a little bit of good qualities, yeah? a little bit of stillness in the mind, a little bit of good mental qualities, but whose body and speech is very dodgy. This is the, uh, the kind of uh, mostly dodgy, but slightly undodgy person. <laughs> So it's, it gets getting difficult, right? Because when it's on a little bit of undodginess, you have to kind of really focus in on that lack of dodginess. So that's why the simile is as follows. Suppose there was a little water in a cow's hoof print, and along comes a person struggling in the oppressive heat, weary, thirsty, and parched. Yeah, so now there's only a small bit of water. The water here symbolizes the good qualities in that person. Only a tiny bit of good of, uh, of water, yeah? So you, before you can just dive into the uh, pool of water, well now it's only a tiny bit of water, so it's going to be more difficult to drink it up. Uh, so what are you going to do? Yeah, you're still struggling in the heat because you're still angry, you're still weary and thirsty, yeah? So what are you going to do? Well, what you're going to do is this. Uh, they might think this little bit of water is in a cow's hoof print. Uh, if I drink it with my cupped hands or a ball, I'll stir it and disturb it, making it undrinkable. Yeah, it's very easy to kind of see the bad qualities. So you have to be very careful. Why don't I get down on all fours and drink it up like a cow and then be on my way? So that's what they do. Yeah, so this is the cow, the cow meta, the cow practice. You have to do like the cow. And uh, so you have to kind of be very gentle. Yeah, and narrow your focus on those good qualities and not look too much that way or that way narrowly kind of looking on those good qualities and then make that the main object of the mind. And then you can abandon the perception of those bad qualities that are there. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting how the Buddha says how hard we should try to focus on the good qualities in people around us. Yeah, we should really try very, very hard. We shouldn't give up very easily. If you see the tiniest slither of good quality, you should focus on that tiny, tiny slither. Yeah. If someone says half a nice word, yeah, they say the beginning of something nice, then you already you should be happy because of that. So this is kind of fascinating. It may, what it means really is that the idea of metta is very powerful because this is metta practice. Looking at the good qualities in other people, this is what metta is all about. Yeah, metta means friendliness. Metta comes from the word mitra in Sanskrit, which means friend. And so because it means friendliness, if you see the good qualities in someone, that's like seeing a friend. Yeah? When you have a friend, you see good qualities in that person. If you didn't see those good qualities, they wouldn't be your friend anymore. They would become your enemy very quickly. Yeah? So seeing good qualities is what friendliness is about. So this is what metta means. And it shows that we should go a long way to try to have metta. Yeah? We should really try very hard. And the reason for that is because metta is always a very powerful quality that does not get corrupted. There's nothing really that can corrupt metta. So what is the alternative? And the alternative is that if you cannot see any good qualities in someone, it is impossible to have metta because you cannot see the good qualities. Well, then it just doesn't work anymore, this kind of system. Then we have to have an alternative strategy. What is that alternative? Karuna, compassion. But karuna is more dangerous because when it comes to karuna, karuna means that you uh, uh, want to alleviate the suffering for other people. So it's very close to seeing suffering. And if you see suffering too much, it's easy to become a bit sad or depressed. Yeah? It's more tricky to have karuna, have compassion. Metta is always very pure. It is very difficult to make metta. Metta doesn't go bad so easily. Yeah? Karuna can more easily kind of go astray. So we should try very hard to have metta, but then when the metta doesn't work, that is where karuna comes in. Yeah? So karuna is then the kind of the, the last thing that we want to do. So um, let us see how karuna is done. Yeah? This is then the next thing here. How do we do compassion? So first of all, uh, in the same way, when the person has only a small amount of good qualities, we focus on that. That's how we get rid of resentment for that person. How should we get rid of resentment for a person whose behavior by way of body and speech is impure? 
and who doesn't get an openness and clarity of the heart from time to time. So this is the gods applauding here yeah. <laughs> outside. So, um, so this is the person who has all bad qualities, right? And so no good qualities to focus on. What do we do then? Suppose a person was traveling along a road and they were sick, suffering and gravely ill. And it was a long way to a village, whether ahead or behind. And they didn't have any suitable food or medicine or a competent carer or someone to bring them within a village. Yeah? So, uh, what do you do? A person is sick. Yeah? And uh, so, what does it mean to be sick? Well, in this case, it means that you have all bad qualities. Which is kind of nice, yeah. If someone who has bad qualities, you should consider them like a sick person. It's kind of interesting. Yeah? And uh, there's a long way to the village, whether ahead or behind. Uh, so the village is somewhere where you can get help. Yeah, you can get su support. Maybe you can be ta taught about the Dhamma, taught about the danger of Kama. They didn't have any suitable food or medicine. Well, this is definitely the Dhamma, yeah. This is the food for the heart. Uh, and so you don't have any food for the heart, nothing to help you. You don't have a competent carer. There are no areas around or no Kalyanamitlas who can support you. And there's no one who can take you to a safe place where you can learn the reality of, of life. Yeah. So uh, the beauty of this particular simile is that if someone has all bad qualities, they are like a sick person. Yeah, so if someone behaves really badly by body, speech, and mind, uh, they are ill. How, how do you feel about sick people? Uh, what is your feeling? What is your um, uh, attitude towards someone who is sick? Yeah? Do you go up to them and tell them off? You foolish idiot, you became sick. Yeah? Is that what you do? Uh, and you don't, right? And the, and the reason you don't do that is because it's not really that person's fault that they become sick. Yeah? Sickness is part of this body. Occasionally you will get the cold, occasionally you will get COVID. I'm not sure if, I, I don't know if I have had COVID, I'm not sure, because I never tested myself, so I had no idea. When I was, uh, when I was here at the beach, so 2020, yeah, I was, I was here. <laughs> maybe it's my fault, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm, I'm kind of the, the source of all the COVID in the, in, right here in Malaysia. I want, sometimes I wonder about that. Uh, yeah, because when I, when I was here at the BGF in February 2020, it was just at the beginning of the COVID thing. Uh, and I came through Changi Airport. And at that time, Changi was actually a hotspot for, uh, for COVID at the very beginning. They got it under control very quickly, like the Singaporeans usually do. They kind of get things organized. But initially, it was a hotspot. And I was, went through it just at that time. And then I came here to the BGF. And after arriving, after a couple of days, I got this really weird kind of blue or cold, right? I had never had anything quite like it before. And so I, we went down to the doctor. I probably told this here last year, but we went down to the doctor and there was a very nice doctor. Everyone here insisted on taking me to the doctor. It was very, very sweet and very nice. And so I followed along and, uh, and they went to the doctor and said, oh yeah, we'll give you some medicine. And I asked him, oh, could it be COVID? He said, yeah, it might, it might be COVID. He said, we don't know. And I said, can we, can we test now? Too difficult to test. Okay. <laughs> so that was a very, I like that doctor, really relaxed, yeah, whatever, yeah, no, no worries. <laughs> she be right. That was kind of really cool. So I, I don't know, so maybe that was COVID. It was a very strange kind of flu, right? So maybe, <laughs> so if anyone here in BGF got COVID at that time, probably it was from me. I was probably the source, the spread of COVID. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, but I, I kind of like that. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of like that doctor because he was so relaxed about things. He wasn't taking it too seriously. So I think maybe, uh, maybe if it was a, if, because it had, because it was at the very beginning of the of the COVID thing, it, people didn't really understand very well. So maybe that was part of the reason. Yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah. So I. How do I do? Did I blame myself for getting sick? Not really. What can you do? Sometimes these things happen. You can't blame people for that. And of course, the point here is that uh, if you have lots of bad qualities, uh, you are sick, but you are mentally sick in a sense. Yeah. Can you blame someone for having lots of bad qualities? You can't really blame them because where do those bad qualities come from? They come from your conditioning in the past. Yeah, that's where they come from. 
So when you see someone who is really bad and does really bad things, uh, never blame them. Yeah, never kind of tell them off. Never uh, think that it is their fault that they have these qualities. The reason that they have these qualities is because of the conditioning of the past. And that conditioning can often be very deep. It can go back many, many lifetimes in the past. And uh, so because of that, uh, that uh, when someone does bad things, uh, all the qualities, yeah, all the conditioning from the past comes out at that particular time. Uh, and they come out and it kind of forces them to act in the way they're doing. They don't have much choice. And it's just like anyone here. Yeah, sometimes when you get angry, have you really got a choice sometimes? And the answer is very often you don't. Yeah, if you try never, never to get angry, you probably will fail miserably. Yeah. yeah, why? Because the forces, the conditions are so powerful. They actually make these things happen to you. Yeah. And this is a very beautiful way of thinking about humanity because it means that uh, when someone does something bad, uh, instead of getting upset with them, having ill will with them, uh, you have compassion for them. Uh, yeah, because they are trapped in that ill will. They are trapped in those bad qualities uh, and they can't do very much about it. Uh, yeah, this is kind of who they are as a person. Uh, this is what they have become. And uh, then, uh, you know, then, of course, wholesome qualities arise in you too because you're thinking about the person in the right way. Uh, the reason why we normally get angry with people when they behave badly towards us uh, is because we take it personally. Uh, yeah, if someone says something bad to you, you think, you ha shouldn't say some anything bad to me, 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 me. It's all personal, uh, and it is a personal thing that really makes us upset. So if someone, if a person does something bad uh, towards, towards you, yeah, it is this feeling that it is towards you which is the problem. If the same person did the bad thing towards someone else, you wouldn't be so concerned, right? But it's because it is to you that you get really upset. And so we take things personally, and that is where we go wrong, because it is never personal. The other person doesn't do it because it is you. Another person could be in your place and exactly the same thing will happen. It's got nothing to do with you. It has to do with the other person. And the moment you understand it's got nothing to do with you, then you take away the main source for why you get upset with the other person. And then you can start to see the person neutrally. You can start to see them as a conditioned being. You can start to see that they are more like a robot. They are more like this conditioned, programmed computer that does certain things given certain conditions. Then these bad qualities come out. And the moment you understand that they are a victim of their conditioning, and this is the critical thing, to understand that this other person is a victim of their conditioning. The moment you understand that, then you can have compassion for the other person. Yeah, so this is kind of very, this is such a simple thing to do. And it changes everything. Your entire view of humanity, your entire view of the people around you changes. Instead of thinking of them as bad creatures who desire to be angry and to desire to do bad things towards you, instead of thinking like that, no, you see them instead as victims of their own conditioning, victims of the past, victims of their own bad habits. And then, actually, compassion arises instead. So from having being upset with someone who behaves badly, one moment, uh, the next moment you can have compassion for exactly the same person if you do these things in the right way. Uh, yeah, this is how it works. Uh, and this is basically what Venerable Sariputta is saying here. This is the right way to think about this. Uh, um, let me just read, I'll read the uh, last part here just before we have do a bit more uh, meditation here. Um, no, no meditation, right, Bobby? I, I, I keep forgetting that. Okay. <laughs> then another person traveling along the road sees them and thinks of them with nothing but compassion, kindness, and sympathy. Oh, may this person get suitable food and medicine or a competent care or someone to bring them within a village. Why is that? That they don't come to ruin right there. Yeah, when you see a sick person, you wish them well. You want them to be happy. Yeah, you want them to overcome the sickness. In the same way, when you see someone with bad qualities, you wish them well. You want to overcome the sickness of the mind, which is those bad qualities. It's exactly the same thing. Don't... Yeah. Anyway, in the same way, at that time, you should ignore that person's impure behavior by way of body and speech. And the fact that they don't get an openness and clarity of the heart from time to time. And think of them with nothing but compassion, kindness, and sympathy. 
oh, may this person give up bad conduct by way of body, speech, and mind, and develop good conduct by way of body, speech, and mind. Why is that? But when the body breaks up after death, they're not reborn in the place of loss, the bad place, the underworld in hell. That is how to get rid of resentment for that person. So um, that is uh, uh, that is how to deal with people who have all bad qualities. Yeah, and uh, don't think that this is only for saints. Don't think this is only for people who have practiced a long way on the path. These are ordinary teachings for everyone. Yeah, they're not that hard to do. They arise out of the idea of non-self on the Buddhist path. It's very interesting. Sometimes we discuss things like non-self, anatta, what it means. Uh, what does it mean that there is no inherent essence in a human being? Uh, in a lot of those discussions, they often are not very practical. Uh, and they are, I mean, it's nice to understand the theory of the Dhamma and all of these kind of things. Uh, but this is a very practical application of the idea of non-self. Uh, because what does non-self mean? It means that we are the product of our conditioning uh, yeah, from the past. Uh, cause and conditions that would make us into what we are. That is what it actually means. Uh, and so from that idea of non-self emerges the possibility of compassion for everyone in the world. Uh, this is the beauty of this. Uh. Anyway, let's have a tea break. Yeah, so have a nice cup of tea. How long should the break be for, Bobby? 20 minutes? Uh, yeah, back at, at, uh, come back at 4.35. Is that a good idea? Yeah, okay, 4.35. See you back at 4.35.